last week we lost a tire on our trailer. And if you didn't know about that, go check out our last video. That was a doozy. This week we're heading out to Steve's He's place. the road hero. He's the road hero. Uh, that saved us and put the wheel back on. He has a home here nearby in Yuma and he is going to teach us the ropes on the travel trailer brakes and bearings and anything else we need done. He's going to make sure everything is done correctly. correctly. Follow along with us. We're going to show you all about that. We're producing these videos and showing you a very realistic part of our lives. And we're not doing this to open ourselves up to ridicule, but we hope to inspire people to really think about bearing maintenance on their rigs. We're not all born with a wealth of information, and we didn't know a lot about this before this. In fact, we did all of our bearing and brake maintenance 3,000 miles before this happened to the specs of Dexter Axel, and they still failed. So keep this in mind that we are always learning and we are learning from these mistakes and hopefully we take away something positive from these experiences. Let's dive into the details. This is quite the compound you have, Steve. We're gonna back you in right here. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep. Sound good. Let me schwinagle this thing in here. Oh, it's up, it's up. Yep. good. You have a, a bit of an alignment problem on this side. The other side is good. Mm -hmm. But your, this ruler being a straight edge should be able to touch all four points of the tires with oh. very limited gap. See how I can rock that ruler? So you so have an alignment problem between these two axles. Now they they undo the, the U-bolts and just slide. No. No, they don't. Your your suspension underneath U-bolt wise is fixed. Oh. They actually get under and tweak. Okay. Bend. They oh. bend what they need to bend. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I asked for a bend, not, a, oh, yeah. not an alignment. <laughs> you asked for an alignment. <laughs> I'm here to get bent. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, we learned one thing already. We jacked up the trailer under the axles closest to the wheels. This method is okay as long as you're close to the U-bolts. We would have preferred to jack under the frame, but we didn't have the appropriate materials to do it safely. Oh. Look at this one. It has cap. no cap. This is where you have a dust seal. It's absolutely imperative that you have a dust seal there, so the rubber seal. Yeah. Because if it's not there, and we've been out in the desert, You're gonna get there's the dust. sand mm -hmm. and dust getting in your grease in your outer bearing. Ruin And this could have caused your problem all along. Wait, this is the one too on the way back that was hot. Rub that's running hot. Yeah, but that's, that's the one the brake rubs, so. Uh, I don't know though. Yeah. We're, we're gonna find Regardless, out. Regardless, we're gonna fix that. Yeah, you're not rolling out of here without them. No. I, I appreciate Thank that. Thank you. I won't let it. No dust storms here, right? 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 Just say right. <laughs> Lots of dust storms. However, I've never seen what they call a haboob here. But we've yeah, been that, here a couple of years. Well, they don't get haboobs here, do they? They do. They've had probably one or two in 10 years. Okay, so explain a haboob. That's those extreme dust storms. That's where the, the movies. That's where you have 70, 80 mile an hour winds with the dust, and it's there's no rain, there's no storms. It's yeah. just winds. And it looks like like a white. Looks out. like it looks like brown yeah. Out. You can't like see. Like a brownout. Yeah. Right. That's why they have those signs on the side of the roads that say if you have a dust storm, pull over. Exactly. I always do that by hand for the exercise. Uh -huh. I'm starting to think I need to stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you have any signs of carpal tunnel, and you want to stop. This is the one that came off at Kofa, and now from all the grease that has spewed out, we've got sand that has collected there. This one doesn't even have that seal anymore, so sand's probably getting in there. We're just a mess, so we're glad we're here so you, getting this worked you, out. You take this and you set it on the inside there right. and the inside there. Give it a little tap. A little tap to seat it, and then you can take it here and rock it back and forth. Oh, that pops it right off nice. without damage. Yeah, pop them off. We're gonna pull all the wheels now. Okay. We're gonna do all this as a an assembly line. I'll show you how to use these tools and then you can go from there. Okay. 
you're there. Okay, let me show you one more time. Oh. Let me show you one more time. Oh, there we go. Look at that dirty grease. There's sand in there. You can actually oh. see some of it around there. Bits. What are you doing? I'm trying to get the uh, keep. Keeper. Yeah, it's the keep. keep. So I can't How can you see, see it. with all the grease? You just gotta feel it out. But this one stayed on. Mm -hmm. I know they were super finicky trying to get them on when we did it back in Delaware. Yeah, there it's coming. Now just grab it with your Pliers. grips right like right in those two holes on both sides of that right there pitch it down up here there you go now, now start to work it off you might have to use your other yet and just work there you go this is what would be the castle nut but it's different now what are you trying to get off the nut mm. that's a lot of grease <laughs> yes it is that's my doing it takes a lot. Right. Once we do this, we'll keep all the bearings and everything together. What we're doing, what we're taking apart. While you're doing the others, I'll wipe these down. Groovy. Oh, look at that. Yep. Uh -huh. Is that for me injecting them? Probably. Yep. But is that never ever will I do that again? Was that on the front one or the front? Yeah. The one that was getting hot. No visual damage. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. That's why we're here. This is the dirty part of the job. I guess micro would be proud. We're changing the bearings and mm -hmm. we're going to lubricate the bearings. We're moving to races. These are called races or cups. Okay. Some some manufacturers call them cups, some call them races. And these are ready to go back in the box and these are gonna be your spares in the event that you have an emergency situation where you need a bear. But they must be clean. But they're gonna before. have to be clean yeah. before you lubricate them in the future. Okay. Leaving the old grease in them like that, we'll just keep them from rusting. Good call. And we'll put them in a you know, a little sandwich bag, mm -hmm. and then put them in the box. They're about a water we get the new bearings. And because when you buy the races, they come in their own box, we'll peel the number off the box tab, stick it in the box. With, okay. With the, so you're only having one box for the full set. And you have the old numbers. Yes. It came off at a bit of an angle. Yeah, it did. And you continued down the road with it. Mm -hmm. This one pad here took all the brunt of the friction and the, oh, and, look at and it ate the brake pad. It did. Away. So that one has to be changed. Okay. All right. And I think the rest are salvageable. All right. All the way around. That's awesome. We're going to have you done today, I believe. Wow. This portion. Will, this portion, yes. We'll be done. Yeah. So you're cleaning with the brake cleaner? Yes. Getting all the grease out. I'm gonna get every little bit out of this thing. Then I'm gonna brush my teeth afterwards. It's a good idea to use the toothbrush. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to learn this and do it properly yep. and walk away with this this knowledge, knowledge yep. but it's it's worth saying that this decision to do what we've done despite these difficulties and people we're meeting are like they're making my day it's just amazing what cool people we get to experience and new friends we make and learn from we learn from everyone some way or another, but yeah. to forge a friendship over difficulties right. is cool. We are pumping grease into the bearing, mm -hmm. packing the bearing with this little handy tool. And then there's a little bit of leakage around that. It's not gonna hurt anything. We're gonna end up using that same grease anyway. Oh, okay. I thought I was wasting it. No, we're not. Told him to goober it up, just icing on a cake. 
Wow. Yes, he is. Drop your bearing in. Okay. Ready for your next one. We're doing all the inner bearings first, since it's like an assembly line. And then we'll put the grease seals in. And when you flip them over, the grease seal will hold the bearing in where it won't fall out. Looks like the last one. This is the last for the inner bearings. Oh, the inner bearings. And you flip it over. And then we get the, the grease seal. Okay, we grease seal this first. Okay. Now this can stay as is. Yep. What are you doing? We're going to try and push some grease into these Zerk fittings. Oh, because these are wet bolts and they don't appear to have ever been re-greased. Oh You'll know if it'll take or not. That'll not be taken. No. There it is. Ooh. There it comes out of the other side. Push your bearing it? back in. All right, now your washer. Flat, mm -hmm. round, yep. And you would spin it. And any time you put any pressure on this at all, make sure this wheel is moving when you're doing it. So, yep. Yeah. Hold on. All right, keep going. All right, let's make sure it's spinning. Go ahead and torque it. Back it off. There it goes. Okay, can you turn it with your fingers? All right, good. Now, do your finger tight. Gently, there you go. Right where it stops. Okay, did it feel right? You feel. Right there, yep, good. That keeps you from having to fight with it so much. And hit it with a hammer. Not sure I got that yeah. at the bottom. You're good. There we go. That's done correctly. That's, that's, that's good now. Okay, now you move to the other side, or if you want to go ahead and lube and cap these, and then move to the other side. That way all of our tools are over there. I would not have known this. It doesn't hurt to have that little bit there. It's not much, and it's not like you're really lubricating anything. It's just giving, it's just filling that area. Yeah, we got the tires on. And uh, we're gonna try and adjust the brakes manually, but these are self auto adjusting brakes and it just does not seem to take the same mechanism or it won't work with the tools for manual adjust brakes as easily as we'd like it to. So we're just gonna run it backwards and do them the way it's supposed to be done. Okay, all said and done, we finally have some safe bearings. There are a few potential culprits here. It could have been that the, the grease seals on the caps some were punctured and broken through and that potentially allowed a lot of sand into the bearings and the, the the most external outside bearings which would cause them to wear out very very quickly it's also possible there may be some over torquing involved on my part there's a lot of factors that that went into this but on first check when i injected through the easy the dexter easy lube axle when i injected that
I took it for a spin, pulled the, the hubs back off, and it looked as though nothing had escaped. So I was thinking to myself, okay, this worked, the seals didn't break. But when we got here and we took everything apart, three of those seals had broken through and had leaked grease into the hub itself and around the brake mechanism, which that's not a good thing. So I'm gonna retract everything I said about using the Dexter Easy Lube, and I'm gonna say pack your bearings by hand, period, from this point forward. Steve the Road Hero, such a great guy, taught me how to remove the races, how to reinstall races for the bearings, that, that part on the inside that they ride against. He taught me how to pack the bearings, how to torque the wheels properly, set them, and then work on the brakes properly. And then we even went into the truck and we set the gain on the, the brakes properly for the truck and the trailer. And what a difference. And the way it rolls is even better at this point. So the value of this is enormous. We took so much away from this trip and learning how to do this. But most importantly, I really wanna say that this is a wonderful family and we've made new friends. And it's not just about the wheels falling off. It's about, we got a gift when that wheel fell off and Steve came and rescued us because we made new friends that are just such cool people. We've also determined that this particular ORV, and it seems like a lot of the ORVs, have a misalignment on the axles. It's an easy check to do and you can do this on your own and if you see unusual tire wear on just one of your tires then there is a potential for misalignment but it could also be the shackles on your more ride system so you need to check those too and i didn't know this you're supposed to grease those those are wet bolts and i never even noticed the zerk fitting on the outside so Keep that in mind. If you have the same system on your ORV and you haven't greased the shackles, look into it and learn how to do it because it'll make a big difference. So our next step is we're gonna go in and we're gonna have this checked for the alignment and see if we can get that repaired there. Or we're gonna see if it's just the shackles on the, the more ride system, the suspension system. If that's all that needs to be fixed, then we'll take care of that on our own. But if it needs to be rebent slightly, we'll have that done. We'll keep you posted on how that goes. 